Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will learn about what is exploratory factor analysis. I will demonstrate the steps to conduct EFA by using SPSS in this session. First, what is EFA? It is a fundamental tool used to evaluate theories and validate the measurement of instruments they use in data collection. Through EFA, we are able to identify the smallest number of hypothetical constructs, which are also known as factors or dimensions. EFA is also an important step in development and validation of instrument. Usually, we will perform the analysis before the actual data collection. So, the data collected from pilot test will be used for EFA. Based on the recommendation of Boateng in 2018, about the best practices for developing and validating skills for health, social, and behavioral research. EFA is conducted to extract the factors and also reduce the irrelevant items. If you are not sure what are items and construct, let's take a look at the example here. These are the items and construct originated from Teacher Job Satisfaction Questionnaire, which developed by Lester in 1987. The items are the measure variables. In this example, C1, I like the people with whom I work. C2, my colleagues are highly critical of one another. P1 and P2 are the items. The items C1 and C2 are measuring the colleagues factor, which is also known as the latent variables. There are some aspects we need to take into account when performing EFA because suboptimal decisions can produce distorted and potentially meaningless solutions that can have negative impact on the instruments. Before we carry out EFA, we need to decide the sample size or the number of participants. The rule of thumb suggested the subject to item ratio which is equal to 10 to 1, which means if we have one item, then we need to have at least 10 respondents. If we have 30 items, then multiplying by 10, we need to recruit 300 respondents. Some other researchers recommended the use of 3 to 1 or 5 to 1 ratio to determine the required sample size for EFA. After we collected the data, inserted the data in analysis software, data cleaning is required to screen for extreme scores, missing data as well as check for normality. In this demonstration, we will use the Mahala Nobis distance to identify the extreme cases, which are also known as the outliers. This is the data set we are going to use in our demonstration. In this data set, we have 32 items. In order to compute the Mahala Nobis distance, first we go to Analyze, select Regression, and Linear. You will see all your variables are listed in the column here. For dependent variables, we can choose any variable in your data set that you will not be used for multivariate outlier screening. As it doesn't affect the screening procedure in this demonstration, we will use the ID information as the dependent variable. If you do not have any ID identification for your data set, you can create one and use for the analysis. For independent variables, we will select all the measure variables here. And insert into the independent variables column. We will retain the default method in this analysis. So no changes need to be done for statistics, plots, options, style and bootstrap. We will click on save and select Mahala Nobis for distance column. For cooks and leverage values, it can be used to identify the outliers at extreme cases too. But in this demonstration, we will only look at Mahala Nobis distance. We click continue and OK here. Once you click OK, you will see a new column named as MAH underscore 1 appear in your data set. If you sort the values in descending order, right-click and sort descending, you will see some value which is 
much more greater than the other values in the data set, and these are the potential outliers. But to avoid confusion, we will use the following step to identify the outliers, which is to interpret the values by using chi-square distribution. So we go to transform and select compute variable. Name the target variable as probability underscore md, which stands for Mahalanobis distance. And for numeric expression, type 1 minus cumulative probability of chi-square distribution, or else you will get the left region of the probability distribution for your result. You can select the function from the function group CDF and non-central CDF and look for CDF chi-square, which is the cumulative distribution of chi-square. Double-click the selection and you will see two question mark appear in your numeric expression column. For the first question mark, we will replace it by using Mahala Nobis distance that we computed just now. The second question mark is the degree of freedom, which is also the number of items in your analysis. In this case, we have 32 items, so we type in 32. After that, click OK. A new column, probability MD, is appear in your data set and show the values of probability. But as you can see, all the values here only have two decimal places. So we go to the variable view and change the decimals to 5 so that we can see the rest of the values. Next, we'll compare the values, the probability value with 0 0.001, which is recommended by here. Cases with p-value less than 0 0.001 are multivariant outliers. As you can see from our data set here, we have seven cases which have values less than 0 0.001. So these are the potential, uh, so these are the multivariant outliers that will, we will be excluded from our analysis later. The next step is to conduct tests of normality. Normality tests are used to determine whether a data set is normally distributed. The distribution of data will decide the extraction method in EFA. To explore the normality of the data, first we go to Analyze and choose Descriptive Statistics and click on Explore. For dependent list, we will insert all the variables or all your items into the column. After that, we go to Statistics and click Outliers, Continue and go to plots, select histogram and normality plots with test. We can unselect the stem and leaf here and also for box plots, we click none. Continue and click OK. Then we will look for our result of test of normality in the output window. Based on the output, you can see two different tests which is the Komogorov smirnov test and also the shapiro wilk test. Both tests here are used to examine the normality, but past literature suggested that shapiro wilk test is more powerful in determining the normality of the data distribution. So this demonstration will only focus on the output of shapiro wilk test. In shapiro wilk test, Values greater than 0.05 have indicated normal distribution, whereas values lower than 0.05 means that the data is deviated from the normal distribution. Therefore, the data, dis the data set used in this analysis is not normally distributed. The last thing to consider before carrying out EFA is the number of variables to be included in the analysis or the number of items for a dimension. Lily just suggested that 
at least three major I items are needed for identification for a factor. Fabrega et al. recommended the use of four to six items per factor as appropriate. So when you design your questionnaire, in order for EFA to work properly, you have to include at least four to six items for one construct. That's the end for this video and we will continue the steps of performing EFA in the next video. I hope this information will be useful for your research.